morning, everyone. My name is Mohammed Jubair Alam. Uh, I did my research under the supervision of Dr. Richard Musser. Uh, my research topic was comparative analysis of transcriptomic alteration of caterpillars in different tissues, such as salivary glands, midgut, and body after feeding them on soybean. So first have a look on my research tool, Helicobulpa GR. Uh, it's under the order Lepidoptera family Noctuidae. And it also popular in some other common names, for example, corn earworm, ballworm, tomato fruitworm. It's the costliest insect of soybean in 2013, and it call, it make a loss more than 100 million US dollar per annum. And it has also been a paste on soybean since 19th century. And I have selected soybean because it's uh, economically important plants. And from my previous, from the previous experiment of my advisor, Dr. Richard Musser, um, he showed that um, helicobulpa GEO uh, transcriptomic modulation change while they depend on different plant tissues, for example, uh, tomato plants, tomato fruits, leaves, uh, tobacco, uh, tobacco leaves, silk tissues, etc. And helicobulpa uh, can utilize proteinase, detoxification stress, stress and immune related genes against uh, diverse plant, anti herbivore plant defense system while they expose on that. And there are a lot of protease inhibitors uh, present which are uh, activated with, uh, by just monate acid pathway or ethylene pathways. Uh, these protease inhibitors uh, uh, chemicals include protease inhibitors, uh, for example, trypsin inhibitors, serine inhibitors, arginase, cysteine, the threonine deaminase, etc. So to nail down this, uh, uh, helicobarbagia make a lot diverse protease enzymes. Um, so our more interest on protease enzymes here. So the research question is, what transcriptomic changes of protease enzymes in different tissues of helicobarpa gear compensate these diverse protease inhibitors? And what functional genes will respond differentially in different tissues such as salivary glands, midgut, and body for compensating these plant defense chemicals? So first of all, uh, we did growth bioassay. We made two groups. One group of uh, neonatal helicobarpa gear caterpillar fed on artificial diet uh, named as reference diet. And the other groups fed on soybean leaves for 48 hours. And after 48 hours, we analyzed their growth and uh, analyzed them. Um, this is the lab methodology. You can see here that uh, we made uh, two groups of helicobarpagia. One group, group A is fed on soybean, group B fed on reference diet. And after 48 hours, we made growth biosay. And then we made them flash frozen with liquid nitrogens and dissect. My advisor, uh, Dr. Richard Mosel, dissect uh, 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 on the different tissues. For example, you can see the mid guard, the guard uh, salivary glands, and the rest of the body. And we made four replicas of each tissues. And then we made a, a trisole method for RNA extraction. It's a face to face. Uh, liquid to liquid phase extraction method. And then after getting RNA, RNA um, we made it, uh, RNA is very unstable, so we made it complementary DNA with two heating block system, and then we analyzed with microarray system. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is the growth bioassay. We can see, you can see that there is two groups. Group A is uh, fed on reference diet, uh, this helicobarpagia. Group B is of helicobarpagia fed on <coughs> soybean leaves. So in the naked eye, it's, you can see the difference. It's um, a lot more higher in their molecular weight of uh, artificial fed uh, helicobarpagia. It's um, actually like 0.34 grams. And then the second group is uh, very low. And also the difference is 0.28 gram. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you can see the, the uh, standard deviations among these uh, caterpillars. So if you can see that the standard deviation, the first group in the first group is uh, very tiny, but the standard deviations in the group of um, soybean fat helicobarpagia is very wide. It's 0.195 gram is suggesting that 
uh, the gene expression uh, varied in the soybean fed uh, helicobacter GI in between the group comparing to the artificial diet or reference diet and this is the my the microarray cluster analysis you can see there are six columns the first two columns representing gut tissues the middle two columns representing salivary glands and the last two columns representing body tissues uh, again the gut tissues the first one representing the corn means corn based or reference diet the second one is soybean leaves fat helicobacter gut gut tissues as uh, the similar uh, you will see the first one on salivary glands is reference diet the second one is soybean leaves and body tissues also the same the corn based diet the first one and soybean leaves based uh, uh, cluster in the last one and this among these three different tissues um, the rows representing the same genes which is different in different tissues uh, expression the red color indicating that it is up regulated the down uh, blue color indicates this down regulated so is the intensity color intensity representing the regulations up regulation or down regulations so among the tissues it's a lot more difference the, you can see that um, while it is the same gene is uh, down regulated in gut tissues it is up regulated in the salivary glands but in the body tissues it's kind of balance of the other two tissues and also the trains are similar whether it is fed on soybean leaves or artificial diet the trends are almost similar whether it is up regulated or down regulated so if we analyze a lot more uh, greater picture you can see the right side the graph that uh, salivary glands fed on uh, soybean leaves is the you can see the mostly up regulated genes it's uh, almost 64.6 percent up regulated genes uh, among other two among all the other tissues and uh, the mid gut tissues uh, this second one and uh, fourth one the mid gut tissues the second one is uh, fed on soybean leaves the fourth one is fed on reference diet these two tissues the up regulation and down regulation is almost a balance one to one ratios uh, and also the, these two showed the similar trends um, and then the body tissues you can see that mostly found down regulated so among these tissues the salivary glands is the most up regulated genes among the other tissues it's uh, the 1359 genes uh, is, uh, induced comparing to 800 only 63 tissues suppressed so the, you can see this genes the others too so total we found 2222 ultrasonic alteration of genes yeah i we sequestered among the functionality so the most functional genes we found uh, though it is 55 percent genes are unknown functional but the annotated genes the mostly functional genes we found protease enzymes it's eight persons it's calculated uh, among these 2222 altered genes but if we uh, calculate it only among the known functional genes then it is 17 percent it will be and also uh, the second functional genes we found regulatory and molecular functional genes is six persons and um, uh, the next one is detoxification uh, differentiated genes six persons two next one is detoxification related genes is five person functional the next one is growth and molting related genes both are four persons and then transport proteins is also very vital role playing and lipase related lipase uh, metabolic genes three person carbohydrate metabolic genes uh, one persons transport genes two three persons and transcription two persons so the result if we see the microarray result again uh, the inductions there are a lot more protease enzymes induced in uh, to compensate uh, protease inhibitors found in uh, uh, in plant tissues plant leaves so but not all are uh, significant. If we found a lot more uh, serin protease genes in Helicobacter gia from S1 through S5, trypsin, several isomers, and aminopeptidase uh, 14, and variant genes from 1 and 1 to N7. So I selected a few 
which is, seems very significant here. So the most significant genes we found express a serine protease S4 and trypsin T4. You can see these are very much significant and successful here uh, to compensate uh, in, uh, protease inhibitors. You see the here this representing the midgut fed on soybean leaves. It's a uh, 38 fold higher than um, midgut tissues fed on artificial diets. So it's actually successful in compensating the protease inhibitors, uh, which is not uh, seen here in uh, serine protease S5. Trypsin also not successful. This found downregulated in body tissues, and here uh, it's uh, upregulated uh, 9.51 fold in uh, reference diets comparing to soybean leaves. So in soybean leaves, to compensate that protease inhibitors, we found successful to serine protease S4 and trypsin T4. Aminopeptidase did not show any compensatory response in this case. Um, aminopeptidase N1, however, found uh, 2.44 higher in uh, salivary glands fed on soybean leaves, but it's uh, downregulated in mean gut as well as body tissues. Um, so it's suggesting that among many protease isomers, some succeeded to nail down protease inhibitors, for example, serine protease S4 and trypsin T4. And here, the result of growth detoxification, growth and detoxification related genes, you can see the graphs here. So our microarray growth related gene expression is correlated actually with our growth bias results. You can see here cell size cycle uh, checkpoint kinase 2 is much more high for 49, uh, almost 50 fold higher comparing to uh, um, reference diet in mid-gut, this uh, soybean fed uh, mid-gut tissues, uh, in the soybean fed mid-gut tissues, this one, and growth blocking peptides. So this uh, su suggesting that uh, the growth in soybean lips, uh, soybean fed catabolism is much less comparing to reference diets. So it's representing actually this result. And also you can see that elongation factor as said also the same results uh, related to our growth biosa. And homolog actually is kind of a function is metamorphosis. Uh, it's down regulated, found down regulated in salivary glands fed on soybean leaves. So uh, we found 58 unique detoxification genes and 10 oxidative stress related genes. Uh, playing the basic roles to metabolize toxic and anti herbivore allelochemicals. But the most significant thing is that the allelochemicals actually make target of different tissues differently. That's why the cytochrome, some cytochrome genes are downregulated in midgard, some are upregulated in the midgard. So it's actually depending on uh, the presence of allelochemicals and its, its, um, its, the, uh, its, its role. So here you can see that uh, cytochrome P450 is downregulated in the midgut, but it's uh, active in soybean, uh, salivary glands, fed on soybean. The uh, cytochrome uh, 4L4 uh, is downregulated in the salivary glands, fed on soybean, also downregulated in the uh, midgut tissues, but it's upregulated in the body tissues. However, the uh, cytochrome P450, CYP3T2A1 is very unique gene because you see it's uh, upregulated in the midgut. And uh, one scientist, uh, Howie, Bro Howie Mary, uh, suggesting that uh, the presence of these genes, these unique genes, uh, suggesting the recurrent exposure of um, uh, suggesting re uh, repurposing of um, insecticide resistance activity. So this, the presence of high up regulations in the midgard suggesting that it's uh, in, uh, dalmethane insecticide resistant, this helicobarpa GIA. And also glutathione as, as far as this is also detoxification genes, you can see this starts works and start working on the salivary glands and also in the midgard, but it's down regulated in the body tissues. So the conclusion is, we found uh, two, more than two-fold higher uh, in salivary uh, glands fed on soybean diet. Uh, These enzymes are mostly azuricidine like serine protease, trypsin precursor, HZ2, and salivary protein thiolase. And uh, this second conclusion is the protease enzyme is 17% um, um, found in the salivary glands, the presence of diverse isomers 
of induced protein enzymes than any other functional genes actually related corresponds to plant protease inhibitors. And salivary glands from soybean fed caterpillars has the greater induction um, comparing to meat gut and body. So um, the salivary glands, the upregulation, 64.6%, as I told earlier, that is uh, from helicobacterus GIA fed on soybean, indicates it's actually compensatory diversification to nail down anti nutritional substances from soybean. Also, Although the trends of gene expression are dissimilar among the three tissues, similar trends are found in tissues for both diet, no matter where it's fed on soybean or reference diet. And high fold overexpression of a unique CYP3T2A1 P450 detoxification gene observed in soybean treated helicobarba GIA in the meat guard actually uh, correspond to recurrent pesticide resistance. So it seems it means that it is uh, resistance to dalmethrin insecticide. And also, we can do further research because we still don't know the 55% of genes uh, which is unknown about, about this functionality, which is a major drawback for better understanding about plant insect interactions. And also, we know that how plant, uh, in different tissues the gene expression cha has changed, but we don't know uh, the molecular basis of how the signal, signaling things uh, make a difference. And we would like to, I would like to uh, thank, give thanks to my advisor, Dr. Richard Musser. My committee members, Dr. Suham Moser, Dr. Kathy Minahart, lab members, especially Faisal Al Sube. I am grateful to the Department of Biology, Western Indiana University, and also thanks to uh, departmental staff Christian for NG, uh, for this uh, for his help. And thank you, everyone. Please ask if you have any questions.